Hi everyone, this is Mr. Weaver. I wanted to take a chance here to be able to show you some of the things that we're going to be working on with our first math lesson. So I know through our you know TOPS program in cyber that you know it's, it's kind of more on you for your work and all of that. But I do want you to know I'm going to try to provide videos to help you so that when you get into a new math lesson, you can take a look at the video and hopefully I can help walk you through what it is that we're going to be working on and show you a couple of different examples so you feel good about uh, you know, having someone to help you as a teacher here too. So for uh, 1.2 is our first lesson for everyday math. And 1.2 is related to the word area. Now, area is something that you had last year in fourth grade. So this is a review topic for you. An area is just referring to the amount of space that we have inside of a two-dimensional object. And again, this is something that you did last year. The first problem I'm showing you is, is exactly what you worked with last year. And then I'll show you what the difference is going to be this year for fifth grade. So last year in fourth grade, you would have had a problem like this, and it would have given you a rectangle or something. It would have been divided up into boxes. And each one of these boxes represents a square unit. Okay, and it might be in centimeters, it might be in feet. It could just simply be in something called square units, which just means you know squares that are all the same size. And so when we look at this, we can look at it in one of two ways. If we're trying to figure out what the area or the amount of space is inside of this rectangle here, we can just see, well, how many of those squares does it take to you know, fill up that rectangle? And we can simply do that by just counting. And if we counted up all the square units inside of that rectangle, it ends up being six because we have six equally or equally sized square units inside of that rectangle. So that was one way you could do it. Another way is you could take the problem that they gave you, and they might have given you measurements on the sides. So they might have told you that over here on this side we have one, two. On the bottom we have one, two, three. And so if we know it's two units tall and we know it's three units wide, well then we can use the formula for area. And that formula for area is length times width. So we could simply take our two measurements, two and three, multiply those together, two times three is six, and we would get six square units. So we can do it either way. We can use our formula and take our two measurements and multiply them together, or we can take our formula, we know it's two inches tall, or two units tall, we know it's three units wide, and we can multiply those together to get our area. Remember that since this is a two-dimensional object and we're multiplying those two numbers together, they are gonna be square units. So they'll either have the word square in front of that or they'll have that little number two up there. So what's different about fifth grade? What is the kind of the new part to this? Last year, in fourth grade, everything would have had equal sized boxes and we would have had whole numbers. This year, in fifth grade, you're going to get something that looks a little bit different. As I show you this next rectangle that we have, the biggest difference is we have a lot of these units that are the same size. But then when I get to the end out here, these are only half the size of those. So for this kind of problem, we can't just simply count all the boxes because this box is bigger than that box. So we would not end up getting a correct answer if we just counted all the boxes equal. So for these kinds of problems, we need to do it a little bit differently. I'm going to count here. I have one, two, three, four. Well, I got, I'm going to call those inches. And then going across my bottom, I have one, two, three that are all equal size. But then this one out here on the end is only half as big as the one in front of it. So we have to count that a little bit differently then. We can still do it in the same two ways that we talked about with the first one, but we gotta do a, a, something a little bit different with this last column over here. So here's what I'm gonna do. All of these boxes that are the holes, the ones that are the size of a whole square inch or a whole box, I can still count them. I'm gonna do that now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 
But now these out here that are only half the size, I can't count the same. I can't just go up and continue with 13, 14, 15, 16. What I have to do is I have to realize that this was three, but then only half out here. So these are only going to count as that half. And so when I go out here, then I'm going to count this as 12 and a half. I'm going to add another half to get the 13. I'm going to add another half to get 13 and a half. And I'm going to add my last half to get 14. So basically, I got to 12 whole boxes and then, then added another half, another half, another half, another half to get to my final answer, okay? So that part, again, is the new part that we didn't have last year in fourth grade. We didn't have those fractions on these problems. There is another way to do it. For those of you that are pretty good with working with your fractions mathematically, we can still go back to that formula that's length times width, and we can take our measurements, four inches, and three and a half, And we can multiply them together as well. So we can count them, or we can multiply them together. To multiply them, I know you might be looking at that and say, OK, I don't know how to multiply by 3 and a half. You haven't really been taught that yet. And you're accurate. We haven't really taught you that yet. That'll be later in the fifth grade year. But it's not really as hard as you think. I'm going to take my number 3 and a half, and I'm going to break it into two parts. I'm going to break it into 3, and we're going to break it into a half. And I'm going to multiply each of those parts by that 4. I'm going to multiply my 4 times 3. And get 12. I'm going to do my 4 times a half. Now again, that may be something that you think I haven't really multiplied with fractions before. How would I do to do that? But remember what multiplication is. Multiplication just tells you this is what you have. You have a half. But you have 4 of them. So what would 4 halves be? Well, 4 halves would be a half, 1, 1 and a half, 2. So we can multiply by both parts of that mixed number out here. We can multiply by both parts of three and a half. Four times three is 12. Four times half is two. And then we just put them together to get 14. My unit was inches. And then I'm going to put that squared up there because I was multiplying a two-dimensional object. Okay? So that is something that's a little bit new for you this year. Again, working with those fractions. We can do it one of two ways. We can count, but then we need to make sure that we count those small pieces, those fractional pieces, just as what they are, a half, another half, another half, another half, add it to the rest. Or we can multiply them out. One last thing I'm going to show you is on your journal pages, you'll have problems that look a little bit different than that. But really all they did was just take out some of the lines. Some of the problems that you have We'll have that rectangle, but instead of showing you every single line filled in, they're just going to show you, say, the top or the bottom, and then also the two or one of the sides. Let's try to get as close as I can to a hole as I can. So if you have a problem like that, what they're really trying to get you to figure out is what is that formula. You could simply go and start drawing in all of those lines and fill in your whole box. And so it would look like the problem that we just had that would have all of those lines going across and up and down. But what they're hoping that you can see is they're hoping that you see, well, what is the measurement? What's that length and what's that width? So if I'm looking at this problem, it's one, two, three, four, five across the top. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight going down the side, now I can use my length times width and say, okay, it's just five going across the top. It's eight going down the side. And now I can do my five times eight equals 40 square units. So you have a couple of those problems on your second page today, including a really good try this problem. The try this problem isn't quite as hard as you think. So really give it your best effort there and think about how you would add up those fractional pieces into your final answer. So thank you for joining in on the video today that if you watched it, it should hopefully really help you get through that first lesson. 
My goal is for most of these lessons to be able to share a video like this with you so that you have something to watch uh, to help guide you through your lesson. Hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, always pop into my office hours and we can talk about anything that happens for you during that that day. Thank you very much and goodbye.